Now I came here tonight to watch the debut of Impact Wrestling on the Pursuit Channel. A channel known for hunting and fishing in exotic locations. If you watch me walk down that aisle tonight, you can see I had a little limp in my walk. Because last week I pulled my groin hunting two-legged deer at the Safari Club in downtown Detroit. I don't think he means actual deer. That, I could do that for See, the third thing that I love is watching freaks get their freaks on. And you ruined that for me. And you ruined that for these people here tonight. My God, that was on fire. Oh, man. So right now, you listening to the cart, charisma, athleticism, and raw talent. And what you're really listening to is total nonstop impact. Me and Rich have a very, very, very long but it's a that none of you idiots have the privilege to at this point. Don't you dare miss a lesson. Oh, yeah. Welcome back, everybody, to Total Nonstop Impact, Impact Talk for Impact fans, brought to you by the Impact Lounge. This is Trent, along with my co-host, Kyle. Kyle, say hello to the people. You told me that you want to see her naked. Hello, people. Kyle and Trent back with another episode of Total Nonstop Impact. Uh, it feels good to be back with the tribe here, Trent. Excited. Oh, we have a great beautiful. episode to talk about. I love when it, you know, we kick off right in a good mood. Oh, I love it, man. We, uh, we had a tremendous... Uh, response from our homecoming review that was awesome we, we i mean we got that up late kyle we got that up almost you know it was after homecoming way after homecoming but people really respond to it well we love it thank you guys for that awesome response on it's still getting getting plays keep listening to it guys the homecoming review is on all of our feeds and the uh, impact lounge youtube channel check it out let us know what you think but we're going to be here to talk about the january 11th 2019 edition of Impact Wrestling, which is the post-homecoming show, the debut on Pursuit TV, and uh, the debut, Kyle, on Twitch. Twitch, what are you, are you a Twitcher? Are you a Twitch guy? I am a Twitcher, I like it. Me too. Uh, uh, just in case uh, any fans are uh, a little confused, um, you subscribe to Twitch, just five bucks, five bucks a month, and you can watch every week without any ad interruptions, so I think or, it's worth it. Or... If you are an Amazon Prime member, it's on the house. It's all included. All included. I'm an Amazon Prime member, so I get my Twitch membership for free. Uh, well, uh, so, we'll, we'll, we'll have a discussion after the show in that case. Yeah, so if you're an Amazon Prime member, make sure you go to Amazon, and I think it's Amazon.com slash Twitch, and link your account. That way you have it ad-free, totally ad-free. So uh, I watched it on Twitch this week. Kyle, what about you? How'd you check this out? On Twitch, I, I like Twitch the Twitch. Guy. I'm into it. I love the the chat room going on with it. Oh, uh, it's, it's cool. Uh, it's something different. Uh, it's it's with the times. It's modern. You know, nobody is doing appointment television anymore. Nobody is watching cable TV on time. Everything is DVR. Everything is streaming. Everything is you know. We live in this internet world now, Trent. And uh, I like Twitch. I'm in for the Twitch stuff. I'm gonna be viewing Impact on Twitch every week from here on out. Yeah, me too, man. I love it. I, I did love, uh, you brought up a good point, it was that appointment TV. It was kind of cool to have everybody, like, there was a ton of fans on. We were all tweeting and talking. It, it was kind of like, it reminded me of, like, old Monday night feeling again. Because it was like all these people were on talking about it. The chat goes a little too quick on Twitch for me. I mean, I I, can, I, I was throwing stuff in there, but it's like. Well, don't complain that there's a demand here. There's a lot oh, of people. No, I'm not it's busy. It, it's just hard, it's hard to get a conversation on Twitch, but Twitter is definitely where it was at. There was a lot of confusion on, um, I shouldn't, shouldn't say confusion, on the hashtag. Impact put out word that the official hashtag from now on is just hashtag impact. But people were still, you know, hashtag and impact on Twitch, impact on pursuit, and then impact. The cool thing was Twitter now kind of threads them all together if it's a common theme they noticed. So what happened was as a result of all those different hashtags going on, it was it was trending, trending worldwide on Friday. It was fantastic. 
Now, it was trending heavy. What I think is important now, Trent, is uh, they need to figure out a way that they can get these episodes uh, immediately uploaded to GWN or YouTube or something. Like you know, we're talking about you know appointments here. Uh, people want to just watch whenever they get a chance, whether it's you know on their lunch break or you know Netflix, Hulu. People people don't want to be told when they have to watch something. So I think Impact. Anthem, they need to figure out a way to get these up on the GWN app in a timely fashion. I mean, are we asking for too much? Are we being greedy if we want these episodes uploaded immediately or the next morning? Jesus Christ, Kyle. They, they, they give you a simulcast on two stations. They give you pretty much every damn highlight on their YouTube channel. And now you're asking for this. When are you going to be satisfied? What's enough for Kyle? I think it's Your I think it's fair. I think it's fair to ask for that. I think people oh. want an option, you know, whenever they please. Yeah, I, I guess so. But I think you're uh, give them give them a week. They just started this. Let, let them. Let them we break, are off Kyle. to a great start. Let me say that we are off to a great start. <laughs> we are. It was actually really cool, man. I really really enjoyed it. I was uh, I was watching on my phone. I watched the whole thing on my phone, showing. Uh, you know, my dad's been in the hospital. As um, I know, I'll go ahead and put that out there. He was uh, he was in the hospital recently. So I was hanging out with him, and uh, I had it going on my phone while we were hanging out. We're talking, and I, I had impact going on. Luckily, that guys. And if anyone's worried about it, I appreciate the the concern. Really bad ankle break. It's been a long long road. I'll explain it. You know, if you want to know more details, leave a comment on the the video. I'll give you more details. But I'm not gonna tie it up over here. But uh, but thanks for the the interest in advance. If you guys are uh, showing some care out there, but Kyle, anyway, listen, not not to deviate too much. We uh, oh, you know, but on that same note, I want to say that was so convenient watching it on my phone. I, w- I could be anywhere watching it on my phone. It was great. But not to deviate, Kyle. January eleventh, twenty nineteen episode from the asylum in Nashville, Tennessee, where I was in attendance for these tapings once again. Oh, good for where you. Where you were not because you couldn't get. That goddamn GoFundMe going. Oh, oh good, good for you. you. Enough about you, Trent. Enough about you and your trip and your this and your that. I want to oh, yeah. know what the tribe thinks. I want to know what the loungers think. So, Trent, right now, bring up last week's comments. I want to know what the tribe has to say. Oh, man. You mean uh, you mean on uh, last week's show, the one that Brian and I did? Is that what we're talking no, about? No, 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 no. Pull up the review. We're doing the homecoming review. We got oh, Our yeah. tribe members left comments, and we have to read them. Uh, we will. We'll. Uh, I will pull those up. We'll definitely get to those in a second. But I want to ask you something, Kyle. What's that? Do you? Do you? Uh, how? How awesome was it that our fans, our our tribe, was listening? Was was we got like most? You know, most pay per view reviews, they get up a little late. You know, they get up a little. Um, they get up a little quick. You know, ours didn't go up as quick as a normal review would. We got ours up, and man, dude, the response from our tribe. The amount of listens and interactions the folks gave us, I was super, super blown away. What did you think about that? I was so humbled by it. I really appreciate all of our listeners, man. I'm really, really humbled by it. Well, I mean, Trent, uh, let's be honest here. Uh, we put the tardy in TNI, so, you know, <laughs> we are a little late here and there. But, you know what? The tribe loves us. They know. They know they're going to get the best content, the best podcast the sound bites. Let me talk to you. Trent's PayPal, everything. So you know what? It's it's, it's 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 you know what? We might take a little extra time here and there, Trent, but I don't think the tribe cares. Nobody has ever commented and said, "Hey, too late." Nobody cares. It's all right. Yeah. They expect it from us. We're janky. We're a janky podcast, Trent. You're gonna have to accept that. Speak for yourself, pal. Ain't nothing janky about me. <laughs> I'm delivering all the time. Listen, no, I appreciate. I re- really, really. I saw the numbers and I was like, man. How cool is this? Like, dude, our our listeners are the best. You guys, seriously, I love you guys. You you make it so worthwhile to do this every week, man. So dude, thank you guys for listening. That, yeah, that's why we're doing it, man. All right, let's take a little co- couple comments here, and uh, we'll take it from there. All right, Hakeem Fullerton, he says, do you guys think Eli Drake might join AEW? Well, that's extremely stupid. One, if uh, AEW becomes a success, and two, if unless uh, if if Impact continues to book him poorly like he was in 2018. I think he's in with Impact. I think this is the rebuild of Eli Drake back to the top. I don't think I don't see him going to AEW. You got Cross and Cage leading up to the belt, right? Clearly, it's looking like at some point, I think uh, I think Cage will will be champion. Cage and Eli Drake have a lot of history going back. 
history of that impact, I believe, licenses a lot of footage for GWN on. So I think that they can tell a really cool story. If Cage is champion, you can plug Eli right in there as a challenger. I think I think it can really work. I think it can really work. I, I, I have a feeling like those two would have, make some cool magic because they got history prior to impact. Could be fun. Could be fun, man. I'm not ruling that out. I think Eli's money. He is money where he stands, and I think it, to leave him out of the main event picture would be a travesty. To it be would honest. be a travesty, Trent. But the thing is, like, I've just kind of learned to accept it at this point. You know, it's, it's been a while. <laughs> but what about- that's a good. That's a good. Uh, that's a good analogy there, and a good assessment. Uh, that I put the have, I put the ass in assessment, Kyle. Yes, put yes. The ass in that, assessment. Uh, they have a long history. They obviously have a lot of chemistry together. If you know, if they were a tag team on the Indies and whatever, yeah. whatever the fuck. Uh, that's a good assessment there. But to answer his question, um, here's my take, and I did comment here in text, but doesn't matter. The text doesn't matter. You're, you're listening to the show. We're responding on the show. Um, if whatever AEW it's not even a company yet when, when it is official AEW if they do offer Eli Drake a big money deal and a big run and he wants to go it's a business man I, I will still be a fan of Eli Drake I will support Eli Drake's decision but obviously as an Impact fan I would rather him stay in Impact but if Impact Wrestling isn't going to put the title on him and that's what he wants to do Sure, go to AEW, but I don't think Eli Drake really cares. Like, I don't. The, he takes pride in his work. I'm sure he has a lot of integrity. I'm sure he would love to be the world heavyweight champion, but he follows the money. And you know what? If it, Anthem is giving him a nice amount of money and uh, he's entertaining us every week and he's not, you know, making a fool of himself and he's still in these good, entertaining storylines and cutting these great promos every week. I'm fine if he's still in Impact Wrestling. He doesn't have to be the world champion to me. I mean, I would love it if he was, but Impact is just so loaded right now. We have so many guys to take that spot. So it wouldn't be the end of the world if he leaves, but I don't want him to. All right, fair enough. Fair enough. Moving on here. Um, our buddy, who I we got his name right, man. We got the name right. Miguedro. Miguedro, our friend here. He said, I, th- I think he said it's okay if we want to roll the R2, Kyle. We can call him Miguedro. We can even do that. Miguedro says, like the pay-per-view, but the technical problems really took me out of it a cu- quite a few times. Uh, he, 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 I'm going to condense all of his comments into one. Uh, his other comment was, they're back. Welcome, guys. And then he says, uh, Kyle, you seemed a bit down this week. I hope everything is fine with you, man. So let's go in order here. Kyle, he said you seemed a bit down. You okay? How you doing, bud? I'm fine. I'm feel? fine, Trent. I, 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 I'm, I'm sick, dude. I have a cold. I'm, I'm still doing this fucking podcast. I'm sick as a dog over here. It's dying. It's, he's dying. He's dying. What? You know, he's. Uh, how how awesome is it? We we got people caring about you, Kyle. Little old you. Look at this. People are concerned about you. Y- you know what? It, it's interesting though because this is Maguedro. Uh, M- Miguedro. No, no. Uh, Mi- yeah, Miguedro. You can't. Mi- it, you, you were you were the thing you were doing wrong was adding was with the U. You were calling Miguel the way. You know, we got to get rid of the way. There's no way to in flatten there. it out. Miguedro, Miguedro, just like Miguel, Miguedro, Miguedro. Our our good pal Miguedro. It's it's interesting though because he was the first person that didn't like us when we first got to the Impact Lounge. I know, and it's now amazing. he loves us. He listens every week. He checks for our podcast. He wants to make sure that my health is all right. That I'm okay. Everything is all right. Thank you, Miguedro. I I, we, I, I, I do love you, buddy. That's awesome. Uh, he mentioned technical problems. Now, of course, I didn't see that because, uh, once again, did I mention I was in the building live? <laughs> yeah, I was in the building live. What technical problems did you have, Kyle? Because uh, because I was there live, I didn't experience any technical problems, you know, because I was in the building live. Yeah, so it wasn't perfect. <laughs> uh, the audio got a little funky here and there. Uh, there was a few uh, bad camera spots. It's live. Live production. Live. It happens, right? It happens. Happen. I mean, it's not the end of the world. Like, my thing personally, if a show isn't perfect in that regard, I'm not going to really, like, hold it against them. Like, I'm not going to say, ah, oh, that pay-per-view was all right because it had a lot of technical difficulties. Hey, as long as it didn't really affect any of the matches, which it didn't, I don't think it ruined anything. Uh, it's fine, man. The roster worked their asses off. The show was great. Everything was good. 
I don't really care that there was a couple hiccups within the pay-per-view. It's whatever. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, Will Smith, the Will Smith, says, Impact is awesome, and I love Impact. Pay-per-view is awesome. Thank you, Will. Ethan Thompson, I think Ethan's a new commenter. Uh, he says, so that's why a ladder randomly ended up in the ring during the ultimate X. I don't, I thought they got the ladder out, uh, by the time the camera came on. Is that, uh, is that, uh, right? Did you guys see the ladder on TV? I don't think we caught the ladder. I mean, they were zoomed in on Rich Swan. I mean, I had my friends yeah. over. I mean, there's a good chance I was, you know, Chugging a beer upside down or something like that, uh, doing a keg stand. Like, you know, I, I could have missed that part. Slap nut, slap nut. They were pretty bit good of a about homecoming it. party going on over here, but I didn't see a ladder in the ring. But it was yeah. clear that there was something going on because you did hear a thump and the camera was frozen on Rich Swan. It wouldn't show you anything else. All right, fair enough. And he says, uh, Ethan also says, great review as always, guys. I don't normally comment because I normally listen to podcasts before going to sleep. But tonight I'm still wide awake, so I thought I'd drop off a comment. Thank you, Ethan. That's awesome. Uh, Glad my to rating know for that ho- we tuck you in. You know, we yeah, tuck we you tucked you into bed at night. That's nice. Uh, he says my rating for Homecoming is seven out of ten. Disappointed there were no nostalgic moments, uh, which totally me too. I was really hoping for at least, you know, I mean, Chris Harris was backstage. Why? Why? And James Storm lives in Nashville. Why couldn't they get these two guys out there? Well, Stuff like that. You got your nostalgic moment. The screwy ending to the main event. That was the ultimate tip uh, of the hat to classic TNA. Ooh, ultimate tip of the hat. They paid homage. Ooh, no, no. He says most of it was predictable other than the tag title match, which I agree. But overall, the match is delivered and Killer Cross made up for the BS finish in the main event. Kill, cross, kill. Totally agree, Ethan. I'm, I'm with you 100% on all that. For sure. Uh, Jamie Weisner says, Impact Wrestling posted a photo of the Wildcat Chris Harris at the Asylum. I... I just mentioned that, yep, he was back there. I was hoping to catch him. I didn't get to see him, though. That would have been nice to meet him. Uh, let's see. Vince Burr says, welcome back, Kyle. Hey, fuck you, man. I wish Tessa would have retained the title. I was disappointed that there was no surprise appearances like Raven or any from the old TNA days. Was happy to see Rosemary back, though. Totally agree. I, we at least needed some nostalgia, man. I mean, what was the point of being at the asylum without that? But you know what? Was, I feel like a lot of fans were expecting some sort of, you I, know, old moment. My whole group was. My whole group I, I was with was. Everybody was. So you know what? Maybe they had something planned and it just fell through the cracks or something, Trent. I really don't know. My theory is this. I had a theory about it, Kyle. I was thinking maybe, maybe they were like, ah, you know, we're trying to distance from TNA a lot. But you start you start showing a couple of you start showing some old TNA guys. Maybe it starts shaking everybody's memory towards it being a TNA. I don't know. Then again, they 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 push the GWN all the time. So I don't know, man. I just maybe think they it was homecoming. They, they went back to the asylum. There yeah. should have been something, and especially no yeah. the go home show. They beefed up with the Raven appearance. Like I don't know. I was definitely expecting somebody from the 2002 2003 era to show up on the pay per view. Yeah, I mean, Chase Stevens was there. The Naturals were in the building. AMW could have been there. I don't know, man. It was weird that, that we didn't get it, but it is what it is. Uh, I left a comment saying, uh, guys, I'm sorry. I totally just caught myself because I kept calling Taya Tessa in that last segment review, so I apologize about that. Uh, let's see here. Jamie Weisner also says he loved the Tessa and Taya match. Thank you. And uh, Darkstorm979 says, just discovered you guys enjoyed it. Here's to a great year of impact. Thanks for thanks for joining, jumping on over here, Dark Storm. Thanks for being a new listener. We appreciate that. Thank and, you. Uh, Thank you very much. You know, what, Trent, I think we should cap it off right there. That's a perfect one to end on. You always want to end on the perfect comment. That's true. No that, oh, yeah. There's one. There's one more. I gotta. I gotta bring up. One I gotta more. bring up two more. Two because, more. Dude, you got, you two got a lot more. of love. Here. You got a lot of love here, man. Uh, Mir Neesom says, "Welcome back, Kyle. Happy 2019." Look at all the Kyle love on this, man. Shit. You know what? I'm like the asshole out of the two, and it seems like they're starting to love me. They're coming around. It doesn't end there. Hakeem Fullerton says, Kyle says he's no longer a fan of Ring of Honor. May I ask why? Give him that explanation. All right. You did mention last week. Yeah, I mean, this is an impact podcast, but we can talk a little Ring of Honor. Why not? It's professional wrestling. Why not? Um, yeah. All right, so why why did I stop liking Ring of Honor? Okay, well, 
I loved Ring of Honor for many, many years. I'd say from about 2005 till about eh, 2013 is where it just kind of changed for me. Nothing against Ring of Honor. Uh, it's the fact that their television setup is um, kind of like uh, 80s style territory programming. Do you know what I mean by that, Trent? Yeah. The way they produce yep. the weekly television? It's like the TV show, yeah, you're going to see some great matches. But it's morally a commercial for the live event. You're never going to see any big stories play out on the quick TV show. Everything goes down on Ring of Honor's pay-per-views. I don't know. That kind of format, I just lost interest in it after a while. I like what Impact Wrestling does. I like how Impact Wrestling feels like a mini pay-per-view in, for two hours once a week. I just prefer Impact Wrestling. Uh, I like a little more also of the... Um, I guess this is a dirty word. People always like just get disgusted when somebody says it. But Trent, I like a little more of the sports entertainment style. And what I mean by that is I like vignettes. I like segments. I like the backstage stuff. I like the cheesy humor. You know, I, Impact has always catered to me in that regard. And I know a lot of people, are, oh, you know, they like pure, pure sports like wrestling. And they don't like to admit that they like some of the sports entertainment aspects. But I guess I'm different, Trent. I guess we all like different things, you know, C different cups of tea. But, yeah, so over time, man, Ring of Honor just lost my interest. Uh, if they had a steady weekly television show, I probably would still watch them. But, eh, it's, I don't know. It's, I'd rather just put my time that I can into watching wrestling, into Impact Wrestling. That's why yeah, we do the I, podcast. I agree. Uh in a similar way, just for, actually, no, I'm not going to say why. I'm, I kind of fell out of Ring of Honor because nobody asked me. They asked Kyle. So I'm going to jump out of that. No, no, uh, try to tell us. Uh, you, you, you liked Ring of Honor more than I did. You probably went to more shows and watched you know, more of their content. Where did they lose you? I'd like to hear your uh, perspective. Yeah, I, um, I watched Ring of Honor from, from day one. I was a day one Ring of Honor guy as well. I uh, went to their first, you know, all their shows here in Chicago. Where I fell out with Ring of Honor was. Um, when it basically just became a bullet club show, that's all it became as a bullet club infomercial. And I was like, all right, in the beginning, I was cool with it. I was fine. But dude, it just, it got so overrun. Basically what is now AEW is ring of honor. You know I mean? I was like, man, it just, it became too much. It just lost the essence of ring of honor. You know, they're, they're a very corporate company now, extremely corporate. I mean, they're, they're, they're owned by Sinclair broadcasting, man. They're a huge company. They're kind of not like our own little secret anymore. They're a big corporate giant. And uh, it just doesn't have that essence of that that hard edge style that I loved about Ring of Honor. No. Nothing was compelling about it anymore. No, and I'm, don't get me wrong. I love the Briscoes. There, there oh, yeah. are aspects of Ring of Honor that I still would like to, in, you know, enjoy. But I just don't have the time for it. It's just not worth it to me to go out of my way. I'd rather watch yeah. Impact every week, you know. Same. I'm I'm just very compelled by Impact. It's just, it's just a very compelling show to me, man. And I I'm very interested in Impact what they do. So that's what gets my time. Twitter is a lot like crystal meth Because it's really fun to do And Oprah's on it All right, Trent, I would like to introduce a new segment here on the show. You ready for this, Trent? We're going to do the Tweet of the Week. Or actually, All right. it can't be a tweet. It has to be an exchange. So how about the Twitter moment of the week? We're going to do this every week because the wrestlers are tweeting, Trent, Twitter is a big thing nowadays. The wrestlers are furthering their feuds. They're engaging on Twitter. And it would be an act of injustice if we never acknowledged it here on the podcast. Don't you agree, Trent? Totally agree. Totally agree. Let's go with it. So our first ever Twitter exchange of the week, there was an exchange between Ty Valkyrie and Killer Cross. Trent, did you catch any of this? I did not. I did oh, not see okay. any of this. okay. Well. Was this was this, uh, when was this done? This was After on January 9th. January 9th. Okay, sorry. All right, so, January 9th. Are you familiar with Prince Presley? Do you know who Prince Presley is, Trent? I do not know who Prince Presley is. No idea. Who is Prince Presley? Prince Presley is the dog of Ty Valkyrie and Johnny Impact. That's right. Their dog has a Twitter account. So Prince Presley took it to Twitter Ooh. on January 9th at 9.14 p.m. And he tweeted at Killer Cross and wrote... WTF is wrong with you. Remember that time we were all friends? I let my guard down, accepted you back into the pack, 
and you failed me again, you put your grubby hands on my mom, it's on. I'm going to shit in your mouth next time I see you. Hashtag suck it. <laughs> yes, yes. So the, Prince, the dog Prince, is tweeting. Yes, Prince Presley has a tweet. So then Taya gets involved, and she uh, she quotes her dog's tweet. Yes, sir. she quotes her pet dog's tweet, and she adds on, I think Cross is forgetting that nothing is more dangerous than an angry Presley. Let the games begin. Hashtag, who's a good boy? So then Killer Cross gets involved. He responds. And uh, Killer Cross writes back. <laughs> Hold on a second. I just lost Wait, that. What, I, kind of, what, what kind of dog is this? I, 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 I have no idea, Trent. Uh, something, uh, Some sort of teacup, you know, a little, little teacup doggy. Not sure what. Uh, maybe like a Pomeranian or something. And so then Killer Cross gets involved, and he writes, This is not Taya. I know this is you, Presley. You've hacked your mom's account. You're going to be next. I'm going to get you a little dog-sized gurney and a mini tombstone the size of an Oreo that uh, the size of an <laughs> Oreo that says "Here lies Rough." <laughs> what the hell is going on here? Man? Ouch! Ouch! So then Ty writes back. This is Ty speaking. You're a POS cross, and I fully support at the Prince P and vigilante poop throwing slash throat stuffing activities. You deserve that and a one-way ticket to the hospital. Huh. So then, Killer Cross responds, Well, if you're still in the hospital, I'll gladly take it to finish the job I started after I slammed the Prince P through a windshield like a spiked football. Oh, Jesus Christ, what? <laughs> and then Ty responds, First off, get fucked. And secondly, I dare you to come visit me, bro. If you think Presley is pissed, imagine how I feel. Hell hath no fury like where la, like la where loca. Once I'm cleared, you better believe I'll hunt you, find you, and make you pay for what you did. Tick freaking talk. Which Killer Cross responds with, This makes me very sad. Violence doesn't solve anything. I'm just misunderstood. Okay. And then f- finally cap it off here. Taya writes back, Misunderstood? Is that what your mom would say to you every time you got caught beating up the neighborhood kids when you were younger? No. You aren't misunderstood. You're a psychopath. That is true. That is definitely true. What is happening here? What the hell is happening? So our first ever (laughs) Twitter exchange of the week is between Taya Killer Cross and Taya's dog, the Prince Presley. Fantastic Twitter. I wonder if Prince Presley is going to get involved in this eventual match. That's what I'm saying, man. You know, it wouldn't be the first time. We had what? uh, What was it? uh, Matt Hardy's kangaroo last year, two years ago? That's right. We had just Joe Frazier smoking, smoking Joe Frazier. Joe Frazier. You know, this isn't totally out of the el- this isn't totally out of the element, Donnie. I'm thinking, you know, we might have Prince Presley versus Killer Cross. Why not? Hey, listen, what the hell? Well, crazier things have happened in wrestling. Yes, hopefully he doesn't get the Al Snow Pepper treatment. But moving along, that was our Twitter exchange of the week, Trent. Let's let's dive into the episode review. The whole reason they came here. Yeah, shit. I mean, we're we. Took, took up a half hour of these guys not even talking about the episode. But, hey, here I we go. I think they love that, though, Trent. I honestly I sure call me do. crazy. I believe there's a certain amount of people that listen to our podcast and then probably drop off when the review starts. They just want to hear us be ourselves. Hey, that, could, that could very well be. They guys, let us know. They you love like it. the banter? No, no, no. It's not about the banter. It's about the review. Come on, Trent. Get into it. All right. January 11th episode. From the Asylum, guys. All right, it kicks off. Johnny Impact, champion, retained at homecoming. Starts it off in the ring. And he talks about how the world title is very important to him. Bop, 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 bop. Trent, Trent, Trent. I, oh. I, I'm not going to let you uh, just not mention the uh, video that started out the show. But you you were in person, so we'll, I didn't we'll, see we'll it. give you a pass. We'll give you a pass. Uh, I saw it on Twitch. It was, it was a recap video. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah, an right, video. Yes, but uh, it, it's very important to note uh, the, the quote. The um oh. the recap opened up with the quote. Go ahead. It's always Tell darkest the before the dawn. Last Sunday the sun rose again. It remind us it reminded us that change is a constant in life. There were winners and losers. Their effort is unwavering. These men and women always deliver when it means the most. What does that quote mean to you there, Trent? It means that you're trying to be a fucking poet on a wrestling review. That's what it means to me. I'm reading what they, they <laughs> produced, man. It's a review. <laughs> it means that uh, that we're, we're we got an interesting title picture coming. That's what that's how I read it. There's a lot 
that basically means to me there's a lot of moving parts, and you're eventually going to get something you didn't expect to happen here. So that's how I read it. Yeah, but but then your favorite wrestler of all time, Johnny Impact, makes his way to the ring. Continue, Trey. Continue. Johnny, Johnny comes in. He's talking about what happened at the pay-per-view. He talks about how as important the world title is to him, nothing's more important than his wife. And uh, that the end of homecoming should have been a celebration, but Ty has been in the hospital after what Cross does, you know, did to her. So Johnny gets a little serious. Now, now Trent, talking. Trent, you were in the crowd for this. Uh, I got to ask, yeah. on television, everything Johnny said, he was getting booed. And it's crazy. This guy's, his wife got attacked and the people are booing him. When he mentioned her being in the hospital, the people popped even more. This was on TV. Trent, you were there in person. Was he getting booed that badly in person? Boo Ernst. Dude, it was even louder in person. He was getting booed out of the building. There was a point where I looked at Johnny, and I was like, man, it's kind of crazy. He's getting booed pretty bad. Boo Ernst. And he, uh, he had kind of a look on his face where it kind of threw him off for a second. Like, he was like, what the fuck? Like, I'm supposed to be the good guy here. No, but like, that, he, was, that was my problem with him. Here's a criticism I have with the guy. Now, I'm usually the one here on the show that likes him because I think he's a hell of an in-ring performer. It's his microphone work that he struggles with, and this is evident of it. Trent, it bothers me that the people were booing the shit out of him, and he didn't respond or react. It's like he just stared at the camera and regurgitated whatever his lines were. These yeah. people are booing him loudly, chanting, kill, cross, kill. When he mentions his wife is in the hospital, he doesn't, shut up, shut nothing. He doesn't react, and it's like... A guy like Eli Drake plays off the crowd and responds to every little thing in the room with his eyes or with his mouth. Johnny Impact, when it comes to being a character, this guy is so lame. Boy. He just He's just following the script, man. And he's just like, well, I got to get these lines out, and I'm rattled, but I got to get these lines out. But no, you're right. He should have reacted, because I was hoping he would, actually. Because it was even loud. Honestly, it was louder in person than it, than it came off on, I came across on TV. And, uh, man, I was really hoping he said something. But in that case, based on that, when Cage came out, Cage rushes out to the ring. Dude, the Cage pop was ridiculous. It was fucking ridiculous how insane the Cage pop was because of this. People lost their shit. You know, they were, they were, they were, they were cheering the shit out of Cage. Basically, Cage got in Johnny's face, talked about how he had a beat, and he said it's bullshit. That he had him, you know, that you know, I had you beat for basically three three times over, you know, this and that. And then uh, Johnny's not having it, doesn't want anything to do with it. He's like, look, I got to focus on Cross. They start bickering. Killer Cross then comes out and he, call, he says, ladies and gentlemen, behold, the great, the great, uh, I think called him imposter. imposter. Yeah, the great imposter holding the title. And, um, no, th so you have this this cluster going on. You got Cross from the ramp, mocking Johnny. You got Cage, who's like, no, you got to focus on me first. So, and you know, Johnny's trying to address both, and it's 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 cool because it's like, man, you just set up two contenders. It's great. It is fantastic. I I loved it, man. It was a, uh, it it was like, man, you didn't know which way it could go. It could go either way, but um. So you know, so Cage tries to, or uh, Johnny tries to go after uh, Cross. Cage stops him. They kind of get, uh, they get you know, a little bit of a little bit of a brawl there. There's some, there's some clotheslines and thrown and whatnot. And Cross and Cage face off, and Cage kind of flexes his muscles. You know, Johnny's down. The two of those guys look at each other. Basically, it's like one of us is taking this belt. It's going to be you or me, but one of us is taking this title off this guy. And Cage is basically showing it's going to be me. But then Cross show, plays a psychological game. So, dude, huge opening segment because the crowd was totally split in Cage and Cross. And uh, the face-off between those two got a bigger pop than the main event than the, the, uh, the pay-per-view. So I think that if one of these guys gets the belt and faces the other, pff, the fans are great for it. I, I'm personally good for it. What do you think, Loungers, what do you think about that if it's a Cage and Cross main event? What do you think, Kyle? Cajun Cross main event. I like that. That sounds very good. But uh, I got to ask you, Trent, um, do you notice that Killer Cross has changed a little bit since when he first came into the company? I noticed that his character now, go back to the original Killer Cross promos months ago, like watch all of his early work 
watch all of his promos, and up until very recently, I'm not saying way back, I mean up until recently, I feel like his character has changed a little bit, or he's 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 being a little different out there. What I notice is he's... Well, we found out that he has flaws, and since then, he's changed. He's changed a little bit. Uh, he speaks differently. He's got a little more of a, I'd say, like a sense of humor. Do you notice how he's a little different? Yeah, he's, he's more on this, like... Uh psychological like sociopath style like before he was strictly like a quiet hitman you know what hit i mean me, yeah and now he's more like playing a psychological game you know he's he he can look at you and while you're hitting him and he's laughing at him you know people and he's smiling going yeah i keep hitting me it's i'm absorbing all this and it kind of fucks with your head a little bit and he looks psychotic and it's more psychological than how he's playing the yes character. it's now, like all right now Killer Cross's most dangerous weapon is his mind. And I didn't right. think that about him when he first came into the company. He's changed a little, but I like this Killer Cross. I, I like this one a lot. Off to a very, very good start, man. I mean, uh, as I think far he's as, like, the future of the company. I really do. It's crazy to say that because he's new. He hasn't been around that long. But the guy, he has something special that a lot of wrestlers don't have. He tells you his story with his eyeballs, <laughs> the way he reacts to every little thing, all the little tiny, teeny details. Killer Cross is the future of professional wrestling, period. I remember two years ago, Disco Inferno on Keeping It 100 was sitting there going, there's this guy, Kevin Cross. You guys got to watch this guy. He's the, he's the next big thing. He's the next big thing. Kevin Cross. He's in Mexico. This guy's this guy's doing shit that nobody's doing. You got to keep your eye on this guy. Keep your eye on this guy. And nobody did. And when he showed up in Impact, dude, I was like, somebody listen to Disco because man, this and look at him. He's he's like the number one guy. Most of the T-shirts I saw at Homecoming at the tapings, Killer Cross T-shirts. Kill was the Cross hottest kill. seller there. It was the one man that Hashtag was. Hashtag I mean, Kill Cross Kill. That's the hash. That's the chant I started, and that's I'm just putting that out there again. I started that chant. Awesome. Me awesome. and me and cousin Brian, we started that chant. That's the show. But uh, you didn't see it, Trent. But the camera cut to Josh and Tom. Uh, I just said Johnny, Josh and Johnny, Tom. Wow, Johnny. Josh and Tom. Josh and Tom. Yes. You didn't see it, Trent. But the camera cut to Josh and Don ringside, telling listeners they can pre-order the Homecoming DVD, and they had a physical copy of it already. Uh, Josh is holding the Homecoming DVD. You can pre-order the Homecoming DVD at shopimpact.com, but we don't have to tell you that, Trent. You already have it pre-ordered, don't you? Actually, I did not pre-order it. They did have it there, but I bought more DVDs, so I didn't pre-order that one, but I bought a bunch of others. No, you're supposed to lie and pretend you pre-ordered it enthusiastically so the listeners all go and pre-order it because you did. Wait, wait, I'll tell you what, though. Way to that, be a great that, company that ambassador. No, that mock-up that, mock that Josh was holding, though, I got to see those. Those uh those samples that Josh was holding, I got to see those. They were sitting on a table uh, after the show, and I was like looking at them. I'm like, oh shit, it's pretty cool. Should have snatched it, man. I would have real quick. Whoop. There was nothing in there. There was no DVD in there yet. It was like uh like that scene in Spaceballs. You ever see Spaceballs, Kyle? You ever see Spaceballs where like they're watching they're watching the screen, and like they eventually come into real time, and the guy's like, what's what are we watching? What are we looking at? He goes, we're looking at now. He goes, what do you mean now? He goes, we're looking at now. This is gonna be. A, th he goes. This is, this is going to be in the movie. He's like, we're still. What do you mean now? We're still making the movie. He goes, this is now. Now, then we'll have the video ready based on now. He goes, when? You, have you not seen Spaceballs? Oh, may the Schwartz be with you. Oh, uh, dude, there's a whole scene about how they're like filming the movie, but he's already got the VHS ready to go, and he's like, but we're still filming the movie. How do you have the tape ready, and it, dude? It's hilarious. That's what it reminded me of. They had the mock-ups there, and I'm like, wait, this just this deep. This is still. This is just going on. This just happened. How do you have the DVD ready already? Classic. All right. Classic. Hey, right, classic. Any right. space balls? Loungers, you're, you, you know that scene I'm talking about? Leave a comment. Let me know I'm not crazy. All right. We go to the back during the commercial break, and they cut over to um, to Johnny. He's in the back, nurse, you know, licking his wounds, and uh, Cage comes up to him, and he's like, gets in his face. He goes, what about me? I want my title shot. I want my rematch. I want my rematch. And Johnny says, you will get your rematch. Let me deal with Cross first. And, and Cage is like, don't screw me. Do not screw me out of this. So, again, interesting story, man. We got Cross and Cage. Everybody's in the mix. It's super cool. All right. Kick it over from that. The first official match of the taping. 
Pentagon Jr. and Phoenix, the Lucha Brothers, taking on the Rascals of Desmond Xavier and Zachary Wentz. Uh, can I just put out there, I love all four of these guys. I'm a big fan. Personal, uh, personally, I love all four of these guys, too. Dude, this match, I'm not going to go move by move. That'd be ridiculous because we'd be here you know, for two days lifting no, off. I don't think anybody <laughs> expects that from us. Like I, When we do the reviews, hey, loungers, please, let me know this in the comments. Don't just listen. I hate when you people do that. When I ask you a question, I want you to comment and answer. I want to know, loungers. When we do these reviews, do you really expect us to like move for move, go through the match like that? I really hope you don't, because I don't want to do that. I, I I really don't want to do that. I don't think they do. I think they you know they saw the show. Uh, it's good enough to just analyze the match. So which, which which is what we do. This Kyle was a ridiculous match. This there were so many fucking moves in this match. Crowd was super hot. We were going nuts. If you guys, I'm, I'm gonna put it out there. If you're watching the show, and you look, if you're looking at the, the card camera shot, now they kept cutting me off. How the top rope of the ring was cutting my face off if I'm sitting down, but if you look straight ahead and when I'm standing, because I'm standing a lot there in this match, everybody was standing. Uh, look for the long-haired guy straight ahead in the center of the ring. That's me, the guy with the tan, long hair. That's me. I'm right in the crowd. I got a great seat, but um. I was standing for most of this match, so this is the match where you can see me in the crowd. Still holding on to that hair, huh, Trent? I Still thought, uh, on, I thought the metal there. hair was going. Uh, you were saying it's, that months ago. You having cold I know. feet? A little bit, a little bit of cold feet. Uh, you know, my dad's uh, my dad's injury kind of threw things off a little bit with timing. Uh, my mom thinks that's an excuse. She goes, "You could still get a haircut. Uh, it's not like he's, you know, you, it's not like you have to be here every day and this and that." My mom, th- you know, she she's calling me on my shit. She's like, it's totally, it's totally a cop out. Uh, a little cold feet, a little timing issue, but I, it's going to happen soon. I, I'm, I'm getting tired of the long hair. So, loungers, should, what do you think Trent should do with his hair? We think uh, Trent should do something classy, maybe get a nice, you know, little comb over fade, something like that. Oh, man. How about a mohawk? Go punk rock? Maybe bring back the 2000 Afro. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm, 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 I, you know, Trent, I think you should get dreadlocks. That's what I think you should do. Oh, jeez. Those days are behind me, sir. You had dreadlocks, too? No, no, I never had dreadlocks, but uh, the opportunity to do dreadlocks is behind me. Uh, loungers who don't know what I look like, go to, uh, I'll, you know, we'll leave a link. I'll leave a comment from my band's page, my band Hemi's page below. Uh, go check it out, hemimusic.com, H-E-M-I music.com. Check a look, take a look at our latest video. You can see me uh, with the long hair. What do, you, what do you guys think? Should I cut it? Yay or nay? Keep it or keep it or lose it? That's Let's right. see what you guys That's think. That's right. But uh, no, <laughs> no, but uh, great match here, Trent. Um, oh, dude. It ran great for match. 11 minutes and 15 seconds. I, I have the times. We have time now, Trent. Uh, great. Match ran for 11 minutes and 15 seconds. Uh, great match. Uh, to me, the highlight of this match was the finish. The, the insane package Such pile drivers slash super kick slash cutter. I do the Lucha Brothers, their innovative offense on another level. Those guys are Josh, a walking video game. Josh said that's four moves in one at the finish. Insane. That might be a Guinness Book of World Records moment right there. I'm being serious. It was like a it was like a super kick, gory special, fear factor, kick to the face combination. It was so crazy. Lucha Brothers take uh, the Lucha Brothers take the win on this one. Yep. And we get the, the, the feel good moment at the end. That's what I love. I love good sportsmanship in wrestling. I really do. Not really. I, I like people getting kicked in the dick and getting screwed over. I love heel turns. But once in a while, you know, if I'm I'm feeling jolly, if it's like Christmas or something, you know, I'm in a good mood, you know, once a year. I love a nice good moment of, you know, good sportsmanship, you know, it was a good moment. Feel good. Hugging, shaking hands. I saw a match with these two guys. We booked them at AW once uh, a year and a half ago. And it was cool because Rascals kind of played the heel, and they came out wearing stolen masks of the, the other of uh, Lucha Brothers, and they like stole their masks. They came out wearing their masks, and uh, that was interesting. That was a good. I mean, it was kind of cool. Like interesting to see the the, the Rascals kind of play the heel on this one, on the, uh, previously. But, uh, but yeah, I agree, man. It's uh, these two have great chemistry, though. These two teams, I should say, have great chemistry. I love seeing. I, I'll I'll watch them all day long. Oh yeah, real fun. Oh yeah, but then real quick, Trent. Uh, we get yeah. a quick uh, GWN flashback of the week, which takes us to 2003. We get Michael Shane winning the first ever Ultimate X match to become the X Division champion back in the day. 
I just know it was in 2003. I have no idea what show that took place on, but nice uh, nice little GWN flashback. But speaking of the GWN flashbacks, Trent, uh, I just want to let the loungers know, now that the show is on Twitch and people are seeing more flashbacks than ever, and not everybody's watching on Twitch, some people are watching on Pursuit, here on the reviews, Trent, I think we're just going to skip over the GW and Flashback of the Week. I don't think we're going to cover it here on the podcast anymore. So instead, we're going to bring back, if you're listening to us, uh, if you have been listening to us for quite a while and you were here before the Impact Lounge, you might remember we used to do a GWN Pick of the Week. We're going to bring that back. We're going to do our own Flashback of the Week. So, Trent, uh, if you could pull one out of your ass right now, do you have a GWN Pick? Uh, flashback of the week for these people i know i didn't tell you in show prep or anything to get this together but just asking you uh, can, mr can, mr tna give mr. me something uh, you know what let's go um let's go asylum you know let's let's go old school uh i shouldn't say asylum because the pay-per-views were were way uh way before but let's say Man, let me think of an old one. I want to go classic. No, just here, give man. me a moment. Don't even think oh, of a moment. A oh, just show. a moment. Just a good feel good moment from like we'll say like oh three. Keep it time. This is gonna be Trent's GWN flashback of the week. Oh man, oh three. I'm trying to think what happened in 03, man. It's a lot of years, Kyle. Uh oh three, I wanna say there was a Jerry Lynn X Division title win in 03. And um I'm trying to think, man. I try to remember who won in 03. But yeah, I mean anything. How about this? Anything Jerry Lynn related in 2003 is, is a feel good for me. I was in third grade in 2003, and I'm 25 now, just to make you feel old, Trent. Wait, are you serious? You're, you were in third grade? I was in the third grade in 2003. Oh, I'm 25 now, Trent, and just to make you feel gray. Oh, my God. Are you serious? Yep, yep. You were that young? Make you feel nice and old. Uh, I was watching, though. How old were you in third grade? What was that, seven? I don't, I don't know. Something like that. Something like that. Fuck you, man. I was 22 years old. Hey, awesome, <laughs> awesome. I was 20. You know what though? Let's uh, let's let's you know Jerry Lynn. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you one. I I will uh, not Jerry Lynn, but 2003. Amazing Red won his first exhibition title in 2003. So let's go with that. I love. I was a huge, huge Amazing Red nerd, man. I love Amazing Red. So let's go with that. Yeah, if if yep. you have the GWN, go find that. We're not even going to tell you what that, show it took place it, on. Just go it find was, it. No, it, it was it was uh, it was Impact Wrestling. It was a uh, TNA Wrestling Weekly pay per view number forty two. How do you the, know that? How do you know that? How do you know which number it was? Number forty, dude. I, I know these things. Okay, so oh. so Trent. I could also I, be looking at. I could also be looking at Wikipedia. Time. No, no, Trent. Trent, <laughs> I've talked about this for a long time. This is where it starts. This is where it starts. The fact that you know that. We need to, we need to start the stumping. You know what I'm talking about, Trent. Stump the Trent. Needs That's to start. right. That's right. I want to start a thing here on the show now, loungers. If you love listening to us every single week, and you think you have what it takes to come here on the show, I'm serious. Join me and Trent for just a few minutes, and we're gonna do something called stump the Trent. What stump the Trent is. Now, if you know, uh, what was it, that me- that metal show, Stump the Trunk? Stump the Trunk. That's where I'm yep. stealing it from. Uh, Stump the Trunk, or if you're a Howard Stern fan, Stump the buoy. We're going to do Stump the Trent. If you know TNA, you know Impact Wrestling, you think you know it better than this guy, I don't think so. I, I think what Trent has could probably be uh, explained medically. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Trent really, uh, really loves his TNA wrestling. Uh, if you think you're a historian and you know as much as Trent or more than Trent, we want you to come on the show. I'm going to read the trivia questions. You're going to go back and forth with Trent, and uh, if you can stump him, we will reward you greatly. So, listeners, tribe members, loungers, Hit us up, we talk impact at mail.com. And if you want to come on the show and go up against Trent in some impact trivia, we would love to have you on. So stump the Trent. We're going to be uh, unrolling that very, very soon. All right, fair enough. All right, I'm, I'm up for it. I love it. That'd be fun. Awesome. That'd awesome. be a lot of fun. But then uh, ringside real quick, uh, Josh informs us that we are going to see Johnny Impact versus Killer Cross in a no DQ match in tonight's main event. Killer Cross is backstage with Mackenzie Mitchell. He says he powerbombed Taya to wake Johnny up and ponders if Johnny knows how to hurt Killer Cross. He says tonight he is going to break Johnny out of his skin. 
Tonight it's over. Tick tock, tick tock. Now that's what he said in a nutshell. I don't. I. I could never. I could never say what Killer Cross says. Nobody can. Only Killer Cross can. Put it in a the, nutshell for you. The line of that promo, which I had, it was Cross says, "Do you really know how to hurt me?" Is what he asked Johnny. That's that's the psychological aspect. He goes, "Do you, do you really know how to hurt me?" That's where it comes in, man. That's where he's different. He's a he's m- like, master he's like, psychopath. Yeah, he's like, he's like, you can wrestle me, but do you know how to hurt me? No. That's what makes him, See, that's what makes him Trent, nuts. Killer Cross yes. isn't wrestling. He's playing mental chess. Mental mind games. Those mind games, man. Those, those great mind games. You can't, you can't beat them. Mind no. games and wrestling are great. So then uh, we get Josh Matthews in the ring interviewing our new ex division. Hey, you were there. This was in the ring. You take this back. I, I'm I'm only jumping in and taking over for the backstage oh, feel stuff. Feel free. No. Feel free, man. We we both watch the same show. But yeah, Josh is in there with. Uh, he's he's about to interview uh, the new X division champion, Rich Swan, who was looking all. He was all smiles. Was happy to be there. People love Rich Swan. He was very over. But then he was interrupted by. Uh, by Mr. OVE himself, Sammy Callahan, who comes out and he's snarling and growling. He tells Josh, get the hell out of the ring or I'll come hey, take hey, your hey, job Trent, too. Trent, what are you doing? Whoa, whoa. Uh, 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 he goes, get the hell out of my ring before I take your job too. That's what he tells Josh. That's right. Sorry. Don't you that ever, Sam? ever quote Sammy Callahan without doing that amazing impression that you do. <laughs> I got to start smoking like a pack a day of cigarettes. So it's like... Uh, Naturally, I don't have to like put this on. You know, I can just, you know, talk normally like this. Get the hell out of my ring, Josh. And I can do that normal. But anyway, we'll get to that. Anyway, so he's putting a lot of guilt on Swan. He's telling him family is everything. Join OVE. And he goes, you need to, you need to come back, come home. He kept some come home back to Ohio, come home. And he, you know, Swan's not saying anything. Swan's staying real quiet. He's, he's uh. Looks confused. Like there's space. There's clearly Kyle. There's clearly something here that we're building to that Sammy has over Swan. I don't know what it is, but they keep like Swan's guilty. Like he doesn't know what to do. And uh, it was intriguing. Everybody was into this. Like what is what's going on? Like what are we talking about here? Like why is this even a question? But Willie Mack interrupts. He interrupts the segment because Willie Mack's pissed off from the pay per view. He's like, this is bullshit. I took a loss of the paper. I'm not. I'm not happy about this. I don't know what the hell's going on with my buddy. And uh, uh, Willie Mack and Sammy Callahan go at it, man. We got a rematch from Homecoming on this. It's crazy because, like, at first glance, it's like you think Sammy is just acknowledging that Rich is a force to be reckoned with, and he offers Rich a spot in OVE because he knows how powerful he can be because he's been down that road with him. Not an Impact Wrestling. I like that how they allude to the Indies. Nothing too direct, but they're letting you know. Like, they're acknowledging. Yeah, if you're a big wrestling fan, you know. These two have been together before. They have a history. But there's got to be a, something else going on. Like you said, uh, there's a, Rich is, like, nervous. He's, like, guilty. We're going to find something out. Something is going to unravel. I can't wait what it is. But at this segment here, Trent, um... Willie Mack, when he hits the ring, uh, Rich uh, pulls Willie off, and the crowd just chants, let them fight, let them fight. And then it yep. goes to commercial, and when it comes back, it's just uh, Sammy versus Willie in a match like the bell rang. Um, you were there in person. Did I miss something? Like, did somebody come out and, like, make it a match officially? Like, what happened? Uh, referees came out to break it up, and um, they basically said, uh, they announced to us that it was going to now be a match sanctioned out uh, like you know what we're gonna give go ahead and we're gonna get, have a rematch from homecoming here and uh one of the referees stayed i believe i don't forgot which ref it was but they stayed on and they said we're gonna have a match and rich kind of slunk out of the ring and he was kind of looking back at them constantly while we're going up the ramp like disappointed like you know he wants to stop this he doesn't like what's going on so he felt bummed out and uh so rich went to the back so rich didn't say a word during the whole thing rich didn't get off a word at all but, uh, again, very compelling, man. It's compelling storytelling. I don't know where it's going, but there's something there, man. The best wrestling but, show week to week. Come on. Just, it, it, it's just compelling, man. Like, it's, it makes you want to tune in. It's That's edgy. In. The storylines are, like, well written. It's like whoever's writing the show is writing it with pride and integrity. 
And you've never gotten that in WWE. Ever. WWE is just putting together a show to get to the next week. Like I, my image of like once in a while, I will pop on Raw or SmackDown just to see how awful it truly is. Like how bad has it gotten? How terrible is it? And when I put it on, it's like it. It's almost like there's so many hours of content on that show. There's a room with like a hundred people in it, and everybody gets assigned like twenty minutes of the show to write physically write, and then they all chop it together, and it's awful. It's so bad. Impact is amazing compared to WWE. Take the crowd atmosphere out of it. Take the big giant arena. And by the way, I can't stand the double standard of people that love Ring of Honor, love ECW, but oh, nobody shows up to Impact Wrestling. It's a cool yeah. underground fight club atmosphere anywhere else except for Impact Wrestling. Fuck that, man. The Impact Wrestling is the best wrestling show every single week. I, you know, I, I, real quick, I'm, I'm, I don't want to talk too much about that no, whole argument, yeah, but we have to rant. We rant. I think, I think, you know what, people. People just, I think I, I saw what what, proved, what was proven to me on that on Friday's simulcast, the amount of interaction between people watching on Pursuit, people watching on Twitch, and all the comments and tweets. I was like, you know what, man? It's kind of like we're turning in the, in this into our own little thing. Like all the Impact fans are just taking this this moment and like this is ours, man. Like like don't care about what anybody else is saying. I you know a lot of the, a lot of the shit talking has really calmed down. Since the new regime, I gotta say, there's always gonna be shit out there. There's people who badmouth all the companies. Yeah, yeah but the, the the company is finally putting fans in a position where, like, the average nerd that goes out of their way to shit on Impact but hasn't yeah. watched it in ten years, they're putting these people in a position where it's like, wait a second, they have Sammy Callahan, they they have LAX. Like, there are so many great things about the show that, like, how could these people possibly attack the show? They can't. Right. They can only attack management. They can only try to make things up, false accusations against Ed Nordholm, comparing him to Dixie Carter, which is a right. whole other misunderstood thing. But it's just, man, it's funny to me. I like to just sit back and kick back and watch all the geeks, the sheep. Yeah, well, you know, I don't pay attention. So many of them are so misinformed, doesn't even matter anymore. But, uh, but yeah, man, it's just, People, people like people don't want to work hard to be entertained. Sometimes they want that they want to be dumbed down, and you know what? They want to be dumbed down. They'll, they'll follow the thing that they're comfortable with. It's a comfort zone thing. But I noticed, man, on on that simulcast on Friday, people were just so into this, and I was like, man, it's a it's a community that's kind of just in its own world and doing its own thing. And dude, I swear it's just gonna grow from there. I know that's how that's how things start. That's how ECW. Gained that cult aspect. DCW like became more widely known after it was closed from like a national aspect, but dude, that cult feeling, like this is fucking ours and it's us against everybody. Dude, that started just like this. It was like this. It was like, dude, we don't need anybody else. We're doing our own thing. Us here. real fans have always felt that way, though, Trent. Absolutely, and I, but I love it. I think it's starting back because now it's it's impact the different style, you know. Yeah, and it's like and, I, I finally feel like there's more than ten of us. That's right. <laughs> and, dude, honest, listen, this, you cannot deny the fact that under the TNA regime, this was a company that did 2.2 million viewers on Spike TV. Week to week, there's a lot of – and those 2.2 did not jump to WWE once when Spike left. You know what I'm saying? Like those fans were, are still out there, and those fans still want this type of pride. And now it's even better. So what I'm saying is like you know, all this aside – Impact is on such a good rebuild that it's starting. It's more starting grassroots and building off of that, and it's becoming like its own cult society again. And I love that. I, that that's that's about, a lot of companies. And I love it, dude. I I saw those comments in the Twitch stream, dude. I was so I was so taken back. I was like, this is great, dude. Look at all this activity. You know, 10, 000, 10 to eleven thousand people were eleven thousand were on watching that show on Twitch. It was it was the tenth most watched Twitch. Uh, you know, a channel that day. And it was, uh, I mean, their numbers are insane. And so it's like, that's awesome. It's so cool to see that. But anyway, off right, to a good to start. Review. Twitch is definitely off to a good start. Oh, Twitch, best thing to happen. Anyway. Oh, yeah. I love it. Uh, anyway, so yeah, real, real quick back to this. A lot of back and forth. Willie Mack took the, uh, I'm sorry, Sammy, I had, uh, I thought, I, you know, 
really Mac, I, I mixed up my notes, but Willie Mack took the victory on this one. Sammy won. Sammy won at the pay per view. Willie Mack gets the uh, the rematch over here with a with the roll up. So big win for Willie Mack. He needed that win. I think uh, Willie definitely needed to get uh, that win back to keep the story going. It was a good win. And plus, I feel like Willie needed a, a, a win over a big guy, like a credible guy like Sammy. So uh, it, it was huge for Willie to keep to stay in the mix on this one. I like Willie Mack, man. What do you think? I love Willie Mack, and I also love Sammy Callahan. Uh, this was a fantastic match, Trent. Uh, this was my favorite match of the entire night, even more than the main event. I love this matchup. I think Sammy and Willie have great chemistry. I think they are great opponents. Uh, I loved. Uh, I loved. Uh, the way they uh, had this match, though, like I loved uh, all those roll ups and reversals at the end. It totally uh, great chemistry between the two. But yeah, Willie Mack did get lucky at the end with that roll up after a series of them. And you know what? These two can go. These two can mat wrestle, which is which is impressive. They don't normally do it, but these guys can mat wrestle. And, well, Don says that you hear that on commentary often. Every time Sammy Callahan is out there, pay attention. Don Callis or Josh always remind you that. Yeah, Sammy Callahan can wrestle when he wants to. It's a very important I, aspect of his character. One time, uh, there was an AEW show where uh, we get we got the ring was already set up. Sammy got there early, and uh, there was a young guy there. There's a young guy in the roster named Stephen Wolf, and uh, he says he asks him. He goes, "Yeah, you wanna you wanna roll around a little bit, you know?" And he's like, "You know, Wolf's a young guy. He's like, yeah, let me roll around with you." So they get in the ring, they start warming up, and dude, it's all mat wrestling. And I'm watching Sammy, and dude, Sammy was. Legit collegiate mat mat work technical wrestling. I was like, holy shit, I've never seen him do that stuff. And dude, he can work, man. Sammy can fucking go. Like he's a brawler. He's kind of like that. He's got like a modern day Terry Funk. You know, Terry could technical wrestle, but he's more known for being a brawler. And Sammy, it's awesome. It's awesome when he gets to pull that out on TV. Really cool. Oh, yeah. But, you know, that was a great match there, Trent. Uh, in case anyone wants to know, it ran for uh, 10 minutes and 38 seconds. Hell of a match. My favorite match of the night. I think Sammy and Willie are great opponents. I would like to see more between the two uh, moving forward. I think uh, that was just, you know, 10-minute TV match. Put those guys on a pay-per-view. Well, they just did. But uh, put these guys on more pay-per-views, and uh, you're going to get a good match every single time. Those are, Sammy and Willie are just those type of opponents. You know what I mean? Put yeah. those two out there, you're going to get something good. But then, speaking of something good, LAX, they were having a grand old time backstage, Trent. LAX and Conan are backstage celebrating their recent victory with some booze. They're getting drunk. Conan busts out a couple blunt wraps. I guess they're going to roll up some blunts. They're drinking. Some, this, is, this is Kyle's feel-good moment of the show. LAX and Conan smoking blunts and getting drunk in the back. All about I, it. Awesome. I didn't notice the blunts. Was there blunts? I didn't notice yeah, that see, at all. Uh, it takes a very special uh, pothead to realize these things. Um, Conan reaches into his uh, jacket or whatever, and you notice how he handed them both something in a sleeve. That, Trent, is... Let, let me give you a little uh, narcotic uh, <laughs> education here, Trent. Um, Conan pulled out the blunt wraps. Now, the blunt wrap is different than your traditional blunt cigar. Now, the blunt cigar, that's like a Dutch Master, a White Owl. That's like a regular standard cigar that you could buy at the store. But like, like a Swisher? Old, like a yeah, swisher. yeah, but like the yeah. thing is with those, old dudes buy those, like old men, cheap old men that don't want to buy a nice cigar. They'll go in there and spend $2 on a Dutch Master and actually smoke it. A blunt wrap is tobacco paper but it's really rigged a certain way, so it's very easy to just split and roll up a blunt very quickly. It's it's made for people like me and Conan, or right? it's you know, it, everyone knows what it's for. So yeah, he's got some blunt wraps, passing them to the boys. They're getting drunk, they're partying. He's proud of it. But they, they earned the celebration. They earned the right to get drunk and high, didn't they? Uh, yeah, I mean they they still hung on to those tag team titles. So That's right. I guess they I guess That's they earned right. it. Yeah, they got to celebrate. You got to celebrate. You got to party a little, Trent. You need some party in your life. That's what you need, Trent. Uh, you, uh, next time uh, you come to New York, I'm getting you messed up. Yeah. We're going to the bar all night. <laughs> Many have tried, my friend. Many have tried, but this 37 year streak of cleanliness and straight edginess is going to be intact. It's not going anywhere. It's staying. That cross stays where it is, my friend. Sorry, can't do it. Not going to break. Kids, be more like Trent. Let's just uh, let's always put that into perspective. Trent has a job and his life together. 
Kyle's almost living on the streets. Let's let's be honest here. Let's <laughs> let's, let's just tell it like it is. Uh, moving along, moving along, we get uh, Scarlet is in the mirror, getting ready to strip tonight. That's right, Scarlet is getting ready for her strip tease, and uh, she's speaking to herself in the mirror, and she states that she's born ready. Then we return back from the commercial. LAX and OVE, they're uh, crossing paths backstage. For old time's sake, and by old time's sake, I mean 12 months ago, Conan starts clowning on OVE, calling them the ovaries and the Ohio inbreds. I guess for old time's sake. Yep. It was uh, basically just messing with them, and then they were like, right now, right, let's do it right now, and this and that. Seemed a little pissed off. They seemed like they pissed off the uh, the ovaries, huh? Yeah, they were pissed off, but LAX, just died. they just had smiles on their face, man. They were laughing. Hey, we're going out to get drunk. Screw you. <laughs> well, clearly we know we got some uh, we got some matches coming up here, but oh yeah, well at the end of the show, uh, Josh, let us know next week on the show OVE versus LAX. So we're gonna great see that. chemistry, great chemistry of those teams after that uh, barbed wire massacre three or whatever that was. Uh, yeah, three right last uh, last year. Trent, after that, we get the best part of the show, quite possibly the greatest moment in professional wrestling, not only of this year. But of the past decade. That's right, Trent. Dave Meltzer, he's going to give this one 10 stars. 10 Scar- stars? Scarlet Bordeaux, Striptease, Scott Steiner, Desi oh. Hit Squad. Trent, give it to me. Oh, boy. Scarlet's in there. She talks about how she's going she's gonna to reveal the winner of her, her talent search next week. But she wants to get the party started. And she wants to go ahead and do a striptease to celebrate in the asylum. She's going to let it all hang out, man. This is uh, She's under a robe. She's she asks the loose. people if they're ready to see the whole smoke show. Oh, God. Everybody's losing their I was there live. People were losing their mind. You can look at the audience. You see, you see the people. They're losing their freaking mind. That's but, okay. That's That makes sense. That's that's where the burning from the chicken came from. You ran to the bathroom during this segment, didn't you, Trent? Why would I run to the bathroom? I missed the segment, man. <laughs> why would I miss the segment? You kidding me? No, 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 no. That's what the that's what the hotel's for, sir. Yeah. <laughs> or the commercial break. But anyway, listen. So Scarlett's out there. She's going at it, and then she's about to let it all out hang out. And then you start hearing the tabla drums. Yes. The tabla drums. Yeah, of the, the, they, they they smelt the bobs and vagana from miles away. They did, and the Daisy Hit Squad comes out. And they are and Chacha Gama, your buddy, your favorite Chacha, Kyle is leading the way, and he's saying, "Nope, you don't have to do this for these people. What are you doing? They don't want to see you naked. Well, no, nope, no, this is wrong." And then I love that Rohit Raju grabs a microphone and says, "Wait a minute, Chacha, you want? You said you want to see her naked." And then he slaps the shit out of him. He's like, "Shut the fuck!" He slaps the shit out of him. Do not humiliate yourself in front of these people. There's no people here in this crowd who want to see you naked. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like you to. told me that you want to see her naked. Oh, jump. Be Don't quiet. be a stooge. Talk. We'll not give you permission to talk. It was so, it was so awesome. I love. It popped huge. Fantastic. Popped huge. Uh, I, I love the way. I just loved the whole cha cha. Being like, no, Scarlet, don't do this. You don't have to do this here. Save this for the winner. The winner is obviously <laughs> going to be us. You know, <laughs> classic, classic, simple comedy. Oh, so good, so good. Um, they're in there. They're, you know, he's, they're causing like a ruckus. She doesn't know what to do. They, they want those bobs for themselves. They do. I mean, look, yeah, it's, it's a lot of bobs to go around. That's right. Three of them, so. Uh, they're, they're causing all sorts of chaos, messing up her little celebration. And then, Kyle, what do we hear? What music plays over the background? What is the first sound we hear over the PA? Like you I know said, it, folks. What's what's Big what Papa is Pump is in the building. Siren hits. And well, out comes Big see. Papa Pump. Dude, live, everybody lost their mind. Everybody, Cousin Brian lost his mind. Cousin Brian couldn't believe what the fuck was happening. My buddy Ryan was with us. Ryan lost his mind. We were all going nuts watching this. We couldn't believe what was happening. Scott Steiner in the asylum again, uh, and he comes out and cleans house, takes out the Daisy Hit Squad. Chacha starts having a heart attack. I don't know if you caught that. He's, he stumbles over into a heart attack. Now, I have a question, Trent, and I probably am wrong, so tell me if I'm wrong. 
I'm thinking, you know, way back, way back. Was this Scott Steiner's first time in the asylum? Didn't he debut by the time they already got the spike or were about to get the spike? That's what I was thinking. Wasn't was he in like, Fox Sports era, like when they already I, got to Orlando? I was thinking about that, and I started thinking. I believe there was a match with the Steiner brothers in the asylum. I think so, man. I'm um, in, Lounge, in those you know, NWA TNA days. They did have a lot of weird moments for them. Well, yeah. Not weird, but like a lot of nostalgia, like one night, one offs. You know what I mean? Right. So loungers, tell us if I'm remembering that right, because I could have sworn that they did an NWA TNA spot. I'm I'm. I'm pretty convinced that they did. I could be wrong, though. It could be just after they went to uh, to Florida. I just punched my microphone by accident. I don't know if that just, like, shook the entire... Uh... So, did you just get, like, a bang in your uh, headphones there, Trent? No, I'm good. No, I'm good. I, I get excited when we talk about Scarlet. I'm sorry. I, I noticed. I'm sorry. I, I definitely uh, noticed. It wasn't my hand that punched the mic. <laughs> um... So, yeah, man, so he cleans house, puts him in a double Steiner recliner. Chacha's having a heart attack, and then Scar- Scarlett says, uh, I'm going to give him the lap dance. Yes, so yes. Scott Steiner gets a lap now, dance. Now, Trent, uh, right here, I'm just going to click. Uh, I have it, uh, you know, uh, queued up here. I'm going to play uh, Scott's beautiful quote for all the people, what he said. No, I came here tonight to watch the debut of Impact Wrestling on the Pursuit Channel. A channel known for hunting and fishing in exotic locations. And if you watch me walk down that aisle tonight, you can see I had a little limp in my walk. Because last week I pulled my groin hunting two-legged deer at the Safari Club in downtown Detroit. I don't think he means actual deer. That, I've been to that club. See, the third thing that I love is watching freaks get their freaks on. And you ruined that for me. And you ruined that for these people here tonight. Get up! What's wrong with Gama? Is it, Gama's having a heart attack. Get the medics! Now since Scarlett is still out here, she's gonna do... Wait, bro, he tried to get a jump on Scott Steiner? <laughs> Like a two-legged deers. <laughs> Fantastic. That's that's a genius, uh, man. You know, Scott deer, Steiner is the best. I love what they're doing with Scott because it's like he's part of the Impact family and he's a regular, but they don't put him on every show. They have him. He's he's around, and they bring him when they need him. They needed him for this. This was a perfect segment. This was hysterical. I love this. And you know what, Trent? I want to make a point. Um, on YouTube, all great comments, but I noticed that night when they put this on Instagram. You had all these fucking triggered millennials. I I don't know what this offensive culture is. I really don't get it. It's it's not for me. Uh, people are offended by everything nowadays, and all these people were commenting like, "Oh, this is garbage. Why are you giving that? We want wrestling, you know." Uh, all these oh people were just God. like bitching, and it's like, all right, they don't even know what they're bitching about, Trent. Because, <laughs> all right, back in the day. In, like, the 90s when there was that era where they had, like, bra and panties matches and women were sexualized and yeah. almost every character was like a Scarlet Bordeaux and that was it. That's because there was nothing else going on. You fucking idiots. We have a very prestigious knockouts division with some of the best female athletes in the world. They're treated very, very respectfully. They're booked very, very respectfully. This is not 1999. There's no room for any of that. Like what? Because Scarlett has a, a sexy character in this show that has a bunch of other women like that are <laughs> fierce competitors. Like what? Like it doesn't make any sense. People don't even know what they're getting offended about these days. It's like I just don't get it. Don't get it. What is there to get offended about? It's a know. hot chick in a ring. What's the problem? That's like people just just watch the wrestling. If you don't like it, don't watch the wrestling. But uh I got to say, I loved the visual of Scott locking uh, the Desi hit squad without Cha-Cha in the double Steiner recliner. It was hysterical. Poor Cha-Cha was having a heart attack, man. It was, poor guy was clutching himself. Oh, my yeah, God. Yeah, you should have heard Don on commentary. He was like saying, get the medics. It's hysterical. <laughs> oh, man. Good times. Good times, man. But, That's a uh, classic. That's definitely a classic. We'll be talking about that one for a while. Now tell me here, God, do we have a backstage segment here, or do we just go to the next? Was this a commercial into the next match? I believe it was 
But I could have sworn I, this was such a good spot to have a backstage segment. But I guess they didn't have one here. No, no. We uh, we went uh, right into, uh, like, I think there was a quick screen graphic letting us know Tessa in action. And then we came back just with Tessa making her entrance. And she went up against uh, a competitor I'm not familiar with, Callie Collins. You know Callie Collins? I asked about Callie Collins after the show. I was speaking to... Um, to Tony Lacasio, who's the uh, sounds like a stripper or a porn star or something like Callie Collins, you know? Yeah, it does definitely sound like a porn star. Definitely. Uh, I was talking to Tony Lacasio, who is uh, famously known for being the truck driver in the uh, Decay, Delete versus Decay segments. You remember that him? got the guy sodomized by Decay. Sodomized truck driver. He was yes. there, Pants running down. crowd. Uh, he says she is a local. She works for TNT, tried and true pro wrestling out of out of Tennessee. So she's uh, she's well she's well known. That's why she had a lot of a lot of reaction from the crowd i was kind of i thought i was like man i have no idea what this is but she was getting some good crowd reaction and i figured that's why so she was she was local uh pretty short match kyle what's the time you have in this match here two minutes and 20 seconds tessa wins See? with eat defeat and then she looks at the camera at the hard camera and she gets she just mouths i want gail uh i am thinking this is yes. inevitable yes yeah gail, tessa versus out gail. i want it i want it trent I, I, I'm really not one of these Gale haters. I'm sick of the Gale haters. I want to see it. Tessa versus Gale. This is an important match. This is a very important match in the lineage of knockouts history. I think a torch is going to be passed, Trent. I really do. Dude, it's, it's the best of two eras. And Gale versus anybody is is fantastic. So you put her against the best of this era, dude, eh, it's, it's a home run. I can't wait till this happens. When it will happen, I don't know. You could build this up for a while. Make it just that she keeps taunting Gail. I love her. Build she, it for a bit. I love. Right I now. love Gail, dude. I'm a big Gail Mark. I, oh, I, I love Gail Kim. I love her. She's she like our, she's like our Asian women version of Hulk Hogan. She really is. She's so respectable and so nice, and man, she's she's super cool, super cool. Uh, but yeah, man, we go from that to a backstage segment. Break that down, Kyle. Since you saw that, break that one down for us. Eddie Edwards, the hardcore psychopath, is backstage with the beautiful Mackenzie Mitchell, who we aren't going to be seeing much of. Sad face. One more episode, I think that's it. She's gone. He says him and Kenny are done battling Moose and they're ready to move on. Eli Drake walks up to the interview, still on his anti-hardcore crusade. How perfect. How perfect. Eddie Edwards has been establishing himself as this hardcore guy for so many months. Eli Drake has been establishing himself as the anti-hardcore crusader. He confronts Eddie, talking to him about how, does he really want to be the new generation of hardcore? You know, does he really want to wear that flag? And uh, Eli Drake doesn't like Kenny. He does not like Kenny. Uh, No fight or anything here, Trent. Just Eli Drake says a few words, questions to, you know, he questions Eddie. Do you really want to do this? And he walks away. It was very simple, but... uh, Eli Drake versus Eddie Edwards. We're getting it, and it makes total sense. It's just they wrote their own stories, and the two stories have just crossed paths naturally and perfectly. Uh, can I can I interject on something here? Yes, Trent. This I, is our I, podcast. I am looking at Kenny the Kendo Stick right now. I have Kenny the Kendo Stick with me. What do you mean? I, 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 I'll tell you what I mean. The night before homecoming... We were back at uh, we were in Chicago at Warrior Wrestling, and it was. It Did was you Eddie. sneak in Eddie and Alicia's hotel room and grease and, a couple of things? And Greg greased his kendo stick. No, I. Uh, we were there, and um, he brought Kenny back backstage, and I was hanging backstage at Warrior Wrestling, and we were bullshitting. And he left, and he left Kenny, and I said, "Oh shit!" He left the kendo stick backstage, and I was still there, and he was already on his way to the hotel. I said, well, I'm going to see him tomorrow at, at homecoming. Let me just take Kenny with. So I threw Kenny in the back of the car, and we took, took Kenny down to Nashville. But we got to Nashville. He's like, don't worry. I already got one here. I'm good. You can keep it. So I took Kenny back home to Chicago, and I'm looking at Kenny right now. Kenny is sitting in my umbrella rack next to my door. You have Eddie Edwards' kendo stick. That was used on this set of tapings. No, no, no. I got the one that he used the night before the set of tapes. Oh, okay. Yeah. That makes sense. But still, I, you have one of his Kennys? I have one of his Kennys. Sitting right here, man. Sitting in my umbrella rack next to my fucking umbrella. Oh, good 
for you. Oh, good for you. I, I took it with the intention of bringing it to him because I thought maybe that was the one he goes with. thought he forgot it. But he's like, no, nah, I got it. I'm yeah, good. actually, for once, Trent, good for you, for real. Not even a funny <laughs> sound bite. That, that, that's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. I should have him sign it. Or yes, something. yes. But then we get something very, very creepy and weird that just hit me out of nowhere. We see Allie and Sue Young backstage on top on top of a coffin. That's right, mm-hmm. Allie and Sue Young backstage on top of a coffin. Allie is speaking to Sue. Well, I guess you'd call it speaking, uh, and she's shocked that Rosemary came back. And Allie is saying, uh, "Shh, that bunny. She's back for that bunny. That bunny's gone." By that, she sold her soul to James Mitchell. Rosemary is coming back for Allie. Allie is refusing it. Wants nothing to do with it because Allie is not Allie. What Allie is saying is she that bunny is gone. There, this dark Allie is not Allie. But then as they're sitting on top of this coffin, all of a sudden, Trent, a message in blood appears on the coffin. And it says, one more chance, rejoin the shadow. Signed, your dear friend, R. No, it was just a, a R. Just an R at the end. So, there yes, you go. yes, Rosemary Useful. is coming after Allie. We're going to see where this plays out. Kira was not in this segment. No, no mention of Kira, but I, this is, man, the Allie, Sue Young, undead, what is it, the? Undead Bride? No, no, no. The, uh, the Undead Realm. The Undead Realm, yes. The Allie, Sue Young, Undead Realm story. This is, we have to, like, there's things, like, they're doing the long-term storytelling like so well and sticking to it and committing to it. We might have to do a podcast just about the Undead Realm and recapping all of it, Trent. We might have to. There's so much to cover and talk about. I would love to. Yeah, I think we need to. Hopefully somebody's compiled it or something that we can like kind of yeah. watch it back. But we kind of know That's when That's our it job. Was. We'll do that. We'll all right, do that. It's our job. All right, guys. We'll do it. Should we do it after it's all over? Should it, to, to, when it kind of kind of climaxes or what, what yeah do you think? i guess so i guess that's uh, there's no point in doing it now and then having it finish out we'll see no. if, it, if it pans if it pans out if it ever does maybe it'll never end trent maybe not maybe, a lot to go maybe still. A lot you to and go. me will end up in the undead realm maybe if we keep fucking around we might we sure as hell might Kyle. all right man main event time main event here we got johnny impact the Impact Wrestling. Well, 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 real quick, Trent. Very Jesus. important. Very important note here. Hey, this is this is like typical. This is what we do now. I, I aim to do this. <laughs> I actually have to think of something to say every time just to interrupt. Just, just, just to slow me down. Very quick. This is important. The yes. camera pans to Josh right before the match starts. And Josh informs us that next week we are going to see Allie versus Jordan Grace. Rich Swan versus Trey Miguel and LAX versus OVE. So next week, those are some of the matches we are going to be seeing. All right, fair enough. Good stuff. Good stuff. Now, main now, event time. Main event. Johnny Impact taking on Killer Cross. No disqualification match. Uh, dude, this match was out of fucking control. Live, we were popping like crazy because there was like insane amounts of chairs. There was so much violence in this match and. What's the t- what, did you, what did you have this match clock in at, Kyle? Because it felt really long live. 12 minutes and 16 seconds. Felt longer, actually. I felt like they had so much time to tell the story, but honestly, that was it was great, man. There were so many chairs being used and, and wrapped around people's necks and back and forth. It was, uh, I mean, at one point, Impact put Cross under a pile of chairs, and he landed a moonsault holding oh. a chair off the steel steps. Dude, and he climbed, Cross got out of that pile. I mean, he was like, he was almost like Michael Myers ish, dude. He kept getting up from everything. And uh, I really, really love Trent, the picture uh, your buddy uh, Basil took of Killer Cross with that smirk on his face when Johnny's head is against oh, yeah. the uh, steps. C- can we give credit where it's due? This guy, Basil, I don't know anything about it, but he takes really good pictures, man. The kid, the kid's the best. He's he's one of my best friends. He's he's like a brother to me, and I I'm I'm so happy for this opportunity, man. He he got this opportunity to do the impact. This is his first time doing impact. He has busted his ass. Well, I, if, and it, if you paid attention on Instagram today, and I'm not just talking to you, Trent. I'm talking to the loungers. Not being a dick. I'm saying to the loungers, if you guys happen to cross our uh, cross paths with our Instagram today on We Talk Impact. I took a couple of Basil's pictures and put them up. The guy takes a great picture. He knows how to get those mid 
air action shots. Perfect. He's great. He's great. Follow his his Instagram is uh, BZ. It's uh, B two E's four Z's and a Y. And anything impacts posting from these tapings, that's all his photos. Yeah. I, you know what? I think that Anthem needs to sit down and they got to, you know, take write up a nice lucrative contract and be like, hey, Basil, you're going to be the, you know, head of, you know, the photography department. Have that guy do everything because he's great. I hope, I hope he keeps getting to do tapings, man. So, uh, no, he, he's fantastic. We, you know, like I said, we work together at AW all the time. Yeah, you know, if he gets a job in there, Trent, maybe he'll get you in there, producer job, then you can get me in there to, you know, uh, you know, maybe uh, wash all the knockouts, lingerie or something. Somebody <laughs> like that. Somebody, somebody's got to do it. He'll be here on this podcast, so I'll let him tell you yay or nay. <laughs> yay or nay on that one. Uh, but no, Basil takes some great photos, man. Check him out, guys. Uh, Killer Cross versus Johnny Impact. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if it was my favorite match of the night because I did like Sammy versus Willie so much. But this was a fantastic match. Hardcore. Great story being told. But Trent, what was so perfect about this match, Trent, you know what really got me that really had me thinking even after the match was over? Tell me. Months and months ago, when we were at Bound for Glory, and we were, well, after Bound for Glory, and we were doing our Bound for Glory pod, um, I had mentioned to you on that show, what's the deal with Moose now? Like, they're just, they didn't clearly explain it. They, go back and watch the footage. There's no clear split between Moose and Cross. Moose walks up the ramp, and that's it. There, there was no, like, they didn't physically attack each other. There was real, there was no real clear implication that Moose and Cross's relationship was done. Now, like, the true genius master strategist that Killer Cross is and is proving himself to be every single week, Killer Cross had Moose step away from the spotlight and he made all of us forget about him. We forgot about Moose and Cross's relationship and then yep. perfectly, like the true strategist that he is, he brought Moose back out at the right time. Man, and and what a way to do it because uh, Johnny was setting up for that Starship pain. Moose runs out of nowhere, knocks Johnny off the top. Johnny goes through a table. Dude, nobody Moose saw Moose coming. While doing it too, dude. Moose was wearing oh. a Gucci hat. You know how much those things cost? Yes, dude, dude. Moose is a high. He's a high ticket. He's a high ticket item guy only. His, high price tags only. His clothes that he's wearing, or his hat alone. Say his hat and his shirt cost more than the microphone I'm talking into right now. More than the <laughs> computer that it's plugged into. Guys, swagging. I mean, look, he's he's, he's big money Moose, baby. He's yes, got he's yes. got an image to uphold here. Yes, but, uh, hell of a but, match uh, here. Um, Killer Cross locks in the choke jacket. The choke jacket. Cross jacket. Yes, the cross jacket. Killer Cross locks in the cross jacket, which apparently he's been locking into on Scarlet Bordeaux every night. That's what we hear. But uh, Killer, oh. Killer Cross locks in the cross jacket on Johnny Impact to pick up the win. The show closes with Cross and Moose hugging. The brothers have Flexing. done it. Flexing. They were they were flizzing off that Flexing. camera shot. Man. Oh my Trent, god, dude. Trent, have you been hanging out at the shopping mall or something? You hanging out with the kids? Flexing? They were flexing. They were flexing. Or what, 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 no, the kids call it when when somebody's really jacked, they now call it yoked. That's a new thing. Calling somebody yoked. No, 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 but flexing is see all right, yeah. You're you're no, you 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 are as out of touch as I thought. Uh flexing is taking a whole different meaning of its own. Well, wait, flexing muscles. What are you talking about? We're flexing. No, no, we're flexing. You know, I, I'm flexing on you right now. Like, I, I, right now, Trent, I'm flexing on you right now. Well, you're getting, like, loud on me? That's you. I that's flex flexing? on you every podcast we do. I flex. That's flexing? I'm talking flexing when you're flexing your fucking muscles. What the hell is this now? No. Nah, There's I, a new term for flexing? When you were just uh, telling me that you had Kenny in your apartment, Kenny the kendo stick, with you in your apartment right now, you were flexing on me. You flexed on me. What the hell does that mean, Kyle? You flexed on in, me, Trent. Inform the old man. Am I wrong, loungers? Am I off here? What the hell? What am I talking? Papa Tell Molly, I'm flexing. You know, like the, the kids oh. do this, you know? This is, Ouch. we're flexing, yeah. you know? This is what Wait, I get. This, what I, this is what I get. Now, I, I'm, I'm, I, I don't know. I have no idea. I'm, I'm, I was, just, I, I'm trying my get. best. When, I'm 22 years old watching Amazing Red win, a te- win an X Division title. You're in freaking third grade. And now we're arguing about flexing. I don't know what the fuck's going on anymore. All I know is... That cross looked great going off uh, off the air on that one. 
Yeah, hell Huge. of a match. Hell of a match, Trent. Uh, so where where do, where do we go from here, though? What what happens next week? I think Cage Cage interjects. Cage is going to say, wait a minute, no, uh You know, this is bullshit. Now Moose is jumping in here to fucking back cross. Like, no. Cage is going to get involved and heavily. I think Cage is going to try and knock off Cross. That's the idea. Because Cross is now inched closer to that title. Well, I and definitely Cage see thing. a tag team match coming up. You know, uh, Impact and Cage versus Cross and Moose. But at the same time... I don't see the purpose of that, though. Like, what do you? What does that mean, you know? I'm sure they'll do it because wrestling likes to do stuff like that. But what but. I'm thinking here is, so Cross, uh, not Cross, um, Cage has promised the next title shot with Johnny. Remember that? But, like, how are you going to turn Johnny heel? How do you turn, it's Trent, take the scenario. Give me just a fantasy booking a scenario in your head. How does Johnny Impact walk away from this situation as a heel? Because he can't stay as a babyface. The fans want nothing to do with him. Yeah, but that's the thing. You can't make him a heel because there's, there's already there's already two heels in play. Well, actually, no. I take it back. Cage is obviously not a heel. Cross is the heel. Johnny, easy to turn him heel because what you do is you basically have him. He, Bow down and kill be, the cross? No, he basically have him become everything he hates. And, you know, he because tar- he, he's trying to be a good guy, trying to be an honorable guy. And now you have him succumb to, you know, a dark side because it's all he's going to need an, a more intense darkness to beat Cross and Cage. So he's going to have to start cheating a little bit. I guess he starts to put in some cheats, maybe starts uh, turning on the fans because the fans turned on him. Acknowledge the fans a little bit. Start saying, you guys turned on me. You're booing me. When my wife was in the hospital, you booed me. I don't need any of you. I'll take care of these two of my own, you know, something like that. That's how I think you should go. What the hell do I know? I'm just hosting a podcast. No. Well, you know what, Trent? Uh, <laughs> all in all, hell of an episode. The January 11th, 2019 edition of Impact Wrestling. Um, new thing here at the end of the show. We're just going to pick a match of the night. My favorite match was uh, Willie Mack versus Sammy Callahan. I'm going to guess that your favorite match was the main event, but I'll, I'll let you tell me for yourself. Main event. I loved all the factors going into it. It just seemed like a blood feud main event for me. So, Definitely. beginning to end, Trent, there's nothing on the show that I didn't like. This was a perfect uh, way to kick off the Pursuit era. This is a new era we're in now, people. We're, this is the Twitch slash Pursuit Twitch, era. The Twitchy Pursuit era, man. This is a great, great kickoff. We're going to have another one from here next week uh, from the same from the Asylum, and that'll be the last one at the Asylum. That'll be it. Uh, from what I understand, the Asylum's being torn down, so that'll that. be the last thing. I heard thing. that. That's it. Done with the Asylum, you know? That's, that's it. That's, that's great of them to have a pay-per-view, you know, one more time. Homecoming. One, one, last, one last run for the Asylum. So, no forget to tune in next week. Say, say goodbye to the Asylum, guys. That'll be the last one. That's it. That's it. But, Trent, you know what? I wanted to spice the podcast up. Um, usually, this is the part where we leave, but we used to do top fives. So, Trent, real quick. Let's let's let these people end with the top five because they they seem to love it. They used to react really really uh, positively to it. Could you surprise us with a little top five, Trent? Because you know I I, I didn't want to do the work for it. I figured maybe you would. <laughs> I'm gonna list off the top five. Yeah. The top five. Yeah. I'm gonna give you the countdown like Casey Casey, my yeah. The top five. Yeah. The top five. All right, well since we're at the asylum. In the spirit of the asylum, I'm going to go with the top five bloodiest matches that happened at the Impact Asylum in Nashville. All right, so I'm going to pick five matches from the Asylum era. Bloody as hell. Let's uh, let's kick it off here. All right, first one on my list, Raven versus Sandman in a Clockwork Orange House of Fun match Ooh. that took place. Yeah, remember that? That took place on March 6th of 2003 when you were just a wee lad. Yes, but, but Christmas of... When I was in sixth grade, 2006, I got the Raven Nevermore DVD for Christmas. Nice. And the Raven versus Sandman match, the exact one you're talking about, was my favorite match on the DVD. Remember bringing it to my buddy Scott's house and watching that specific match over and over and over. We loved it. We loved Sandman getting thrown off the perch at the end. Oh, so it was fantastic. Uh, next one is going to be, this is, the, this is kind of an unknown one, but the Harris Brothers. Uh, versus the New Church versus Sandman and New Jack that took place at uh, on 
April 9th, 2003, and they called that an armed asylum match. There was a lot of weapons and shit going on there. That sounds Bloody. like a crazy uh, Vince Russo creation. Give me some, uh, give me some deets here. I, I don't remember that one. From what I remember, it was basically as it was a weapons match. So it was the armed asylum match. A lot of weapons involved. Uh, you know, it was a six, uh, it was three, three different tag teams, six guys in the ring. So it's just basically a chaos, all chaos for that one. That really uh, defines it, that era in TNA. It's chaos, pure it was chaos. Cool. Fun times, man. Uh, there was a match. This was a, kind of an ECW um, throwback with Jerry Lynn versus Justin Credible. And it was from July of 2003. And it was part of a series they did. I think it was best of, I want to say best of seven. I might be wrong. It might be best of five. But they did a turn. They kind of did a best of series against each other. This was the bloodiest goddamn one. This was nuts. So definitely check this one out. Number three. And so number two. Number two. This one was nuts. It was called it was a sadistic madness match. What? And it was the New Church, Perry Saturn, and the Sandman taking on Triple X and the Harris Brothers. All those guys in their bleed constantly. They have been known to bleed. And it was a sadistic madness match. Basically no rules. Go nuts. Use whatever's around the ring. Uh... Yeah, it was pretty much just bloody as hell. I forgot what there was an added stipulation I can't recall offhand, but pretty nuts. Pretty nuts. All right, Kyle, the number one match, the bloodiest brawl from the Impact Asylum era. Oh, 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 oh. Oh. And the number one choice for the bloodiest brawl of the TNA Asylum era of Impact Wrestling, Kyle, the complete. Raven versus Shane Douglas feud coming to head. The hair versus hair match. And this is the one that had the hair shaving. The bloody shaving of Raven's head right that's in the middle of the not ring. A shal- that, that's not a shaving, Trent. That is a scalping. There's a difference. Scalping. You're right. That is a scalping. Father James Mitchell, the sight of him scalping Raven and cutting his scalp while it's happening is, is never going to leave my my head, man. That one I'll remember forever. He, that hair versus hair match against uh, Shane Douglas. Oh my God, he just uh, he scalped him. Ugh. He scalped him. It was it was nuts. Ra- Raven Raven was bleeding all over the place. Awful. I, I couldn't look at uh, my cherry Kool Aid the same for a long time after that <laughs> yeah. match. But uh, you know what? I, at number two, going into number one, I'm thinking in my head, how could Trent leave out EC3 versus Rockstar Spud? How could they leave? How could he leave that match? But then when you mentioned that and the Raven scalping, you, yeah, yeah, that. that then there's that, you know. Well, I was, <laughs> That's about I was right. Sti- I was sticking in the asylum era, you know. No, no, no. Uh, very, we're, very, we're in the very asylum. nice. Very nice. You, you did a great job there. Uh, yeah, I, that match didn't even. Uh, I don't think that match. Uh, the amount of uh, DNA spilt all over the TNA ring uh, would even compare to uh, yeah. Spud versus EC3. Things things yeah. were a little bloodier back in 0304. Yeah, people weren't as worried about uh, you know <laughs> about blood back then, but. That was that was my top five bloodiest matches of the Asylum era of TNA Impact. So yeah, man, that was a uh, that was a good time. That was a very good good time to be a fan too, man. Those were some. I, I mean, you know, I was in the, when the in the Asylum, just thinking of all the shit that went on in that building, man. I'm sitting there and I'm like, holy shit, man. The amount of stuff that went on in this building is yeah, nuts. I could only imagine uh, the the fangirl moment you were having when you first walked in. Those first uh, the goosebumps. Hundred percent, man. It got me. I was like, "Holy shit, this is surreal." If you weren't with all your buddies, I I know you. There would have been some manly marked tears. I know my Trent. Yeah, you're right. There would have been some manly marked. You choked up a little. Come on, I did. There was a little quiver of the lip when there was when the huge impact wrestling chant broke out. A little little, little, made my made my uh my my lip quiver. There was a lip quiver there. I got a little 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 emotion. I made an emotional post on Twitter. Which a ton of people liked. You did. It was great. You did. You you had a good good feel good moment on Twitter. That was it, man. That was that was it. But uh, speaking of Twitter, I gotta mention, man, we've been getting love from the Impact talent this week. We oh, got dude. like at least two or three retweets. Abyss Killer Cross has always been very supportive of us. Alicia uh, responded actually. To Alicia, yeah, book. she did too, man. There, everybody was pretty. Cool. Ethan Page, also. I mean, very very supportive roster, man. Um, I believe even uh, a couple of rascals did too. Everybody was really cool, man. It's, it's been very nice, very supportive of uh, 
of the last couple episodes. So we really appreciate that, guys. It's really cool of you. That's awesome. Thank you so the much. The wrestlers would retweet us because I mean, Trent, we're just fans. We're we're, we're not experts, man. Podcast. We're just fans. Yeah. We're just fans doing a podcast for other fans, and for them to go out of their way to you know show some love with a retweet that means a lot. But. So, everybody, that was the January 11th, 2019 edition of Impact Wrestling, an hour edition of the Total Nonstop Impact Wrestling podcast. Trent, we've done it all. We're, we're going close to like two hours here. We oh did the God. episode. We top fived. We talked about Twitter. We did what we always do. We talked about everything but the wrestling. Trent, is there anything at all you have left? Anything you want to say? I got to tell these people where they can find us everywhere, and then we are out of here, man. What do you say? Plug it in, plug it in. Ladies and gentlemen, you can find this podcast everywhere podcasts are found. Apple, iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, iHeartRadio, TuneIn Radio, and Spotify. Rate, review, subscribe. Please let us know how we're doing. Please throw those ratings in. Tell a friend, tell a coworker, tell an enemy, tell your mother what we're doing over here. We appreciate that. If you are a podcast listener on youtube you can find this podcast on the impact lounge on youtube take a look type in the impact lounge comes up right there you'll see all the reviews all the great stuff we do our partners adam and Roe are doing over there too check it out you can also find us on social media on facebook twitter and instagram by typing in we talk impact type that in the search bar total nonstop impact podcast comes right up follow us on all the social media we're posting great shit we're interactive. Kyle and I reply to everything. Definitely get a hold of us. We love it. We appreciate you guys. All the feedback. You're wonderful. We really, really love what you guys are, are all the love you're showing us every week. So, guys, thank you again very much. Kyle, I think that's it. I got everything. I covered it all. I begged him to rate us. I begged him to subscribe. Anything I'm missing? Anything? Yeah, well, you know what, Trent? Uh, we forgot to pick a dummy of the week. So, that means me and you are dummy of the week. For forgetting to choose the dummy of the week so we're gonna close the show out this week with the dummy of the week music and that's gonna be the end of it because we're dummies for forgetting that so that's about it yeah Simple. We're gonna go down the line and we're going to name all the dummies. For example, a guy who wants to flip off a scaffolding, not for time.